In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to this, the Mass of the Lord's Supper, as we celebrate the Eucharist. And think about the Last Supper, when Jesus instituted the Eucharist and the Sacrament of Holy Orders. And I wish to welcome Father Tom Miller with us here this evening, Deacon Rick Tusik, and Father Faustine. And I'm Father Rick. Before we celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you've shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you've given us consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participation in the most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son 
when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church, a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for the whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male, without blemish. You may take it either from the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of, of the month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat it like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The Word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, and it is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I give you a new commandment. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, the son of the, son of the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Last night, I went out into the garden and prayed the rosary. I love to do it every time this close to passion, to the passion of our Lord. And I love to look up at the full moon and think to myself, that was the same moon that our Lord looked at from the garden of Gethsemane. He looked at it. And I prayed the, the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary as I've been praying more and more the rosary so to put an end to this terrible plague and for the sufferings of many around the world, praying the rosary. And as I was looking up at the moon, I thought to myself, that is the same moon that the Israel looked on when the first Passover, as we heard in our first reading, the first Passover, the Lord God said to Moses, on the 10th of the month of this month, which was the month of Nisan, on the Jewish calendar, which is a lunar calendar. And that is how we know when Easter is, when Passover comes, when the full moon of Nisan, on the 15th of that month, or the 15th day in the calendar, we celebrate Passover. And that night our Lord was looking at, it was after he left this Last Supper, and I want to share with you what Pope Francis wrote so beautifully about this beautiful gospel we heard. This evening gospel contains a phrase that is very close, very much the core of what Jesus did for us. And that phrase is, having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus loves us to the point of giving up his life for us. And every one of us, yes, every one of us can say that Jesus gave his life up for us. And then the first Passover going back. The first Passover and each Passover every year for the Jewish, for the Israelites, the immolation of the Passover lamb during the feast of Passover it is the most perfect prefigurement of the Eucharist in all three aspects, sacrifice, communion, and the effect of grace. That first Passover, and then the Passover of the Last Supper, where our Jesus, our Lord, was there with his disciples. And it was a Passover meal. And they, and they were sitting, they were reclining at table, which is very important because reclining reminds the participants of the liberation and freedom to relax, set free from slavery, set free from bondage. And then it says that Jesus, after a while, he got up, took out off his outer garments. And he took off all his outer garments. He probably had just a little loincloth on. And he moved away from the disciples and wrapped a towel around his waist. He girded himself with this towel and he went down below the disciples, below them, in front of them. And he, in his humility, he got down on his knees. As I read that gospel, it reminded me of all the times as a priest that we priests washed the feet of, of, of the parishioners. And all the wonderful experience of, of washing the feet, doing as our Lord told us. When Jesus stripped off all his garments, he did that so that he could get down in complete humility in front of the disciples with a bowl. He poured water and with his own body, he washed the disciples. That was a prefigurement, prefigurement of confession. Because just as Jesus washed the dirt off of the disciples, he washed off their sins. And that's why it's so important that you must be in a state of grace to receive the sacrament of the Eucharist. If you are with sin, you must go to confession. When Jesus washed the dirt off of the disciples and their feet were dirty. If you've ever been to the Holy Land, you know that there, there's much sand and much, much dirt. And their feet were sweaty. And Jesus, with his own hands, washed the feet. And he got their, their dirt on them. The dirt came onto him, the same body that he would offer up the next day on the cross. 
And he, and he said, do this as I do to you. Jesus, as the Philippian prayers tells us, Jesus came in the form of God, but did not grasp at being God, but came to us as a slave. He got down as a slave in humility, complete humility and love. He loved the disciples. He loves you and me the exact same way, with a love that we cannot understand, a love that is impossible for we as human beings to understand completely. But he loves you with that perfect love, that infinite love, that powerful love, the same love that he loves God the Father, the same love he loves his blessed mother, the same love that he loves you and me, that perfect love. Love is the most important, most powerful force in all the universe. And so, when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, he told them, do this as I do. Let this be an example to you. Go and forgive from your heart always. Then he went back up to the table and he broke, and, he, and, and at that moment, Satan was talking to Judas. And the Lord knew what was in Judas' mind, because the Lord knows everything. And he said, he said, whoever dips his dip into the cup as I do, an act of love. That's another example of why it was the Passover meal, because herbs mixed with honey and apple and different things, and Jesus with own hands lovingly, put that into Judas's hands. And at that moment, Satan entered Judas and he left. But Jesus loved Judas to the very end, even to the giving up of his life. He loved him so dearly. So, the Passover, the first, the last supper. The next day, on, on the death of our Lord as he hung upon that cross. You know, in John's gospel, it actually says that at the moment Jesus was dying on the cross, if you could raise up and float over the temple, all the lambs within the temple were being slain for the Passover meal that night, slain by the hundreds. Jesus is the new, the true lamb who, who poured out his blood for us, he poured out his blood for you and me. So much does he love us. So as we prepare to receive our Lord's precious body and blood from this holy altar this evening, let us give thanks to love who is love. Jesus, who came from love, he knew he's going to return to love, but he didn't want that to be a consolation because he was also love itself. In that garden, he knew what was ahead of him the next day. The, the beatings, the whippings, the scourging, the crown of thorns, the passion, the walk along the, the Via Dolorosa, and most of all, those nails being driven into his precious body out of love for you and for me. Let us give thanks to the Lord with all our hearts. And in this, in this time, in, the, in this day of this plague all around us, the virus, the corona, let us pray to our Lord that when this is finished, that we will be a new people. That we will return to the Lord with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our souls, and love the Lord God with all of our strength, as he loves us. For all priests, may God continue to purify, to sanctify them in their holy orders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations and peoples torn by conflict, may the Lord grant them his peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who are oppressed, may they receive the grace of perseverance let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the Lord's abundant blessing upon this faith community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the faith, may God bring them to himself for a life of eternal joy and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, in the sacrifice of your Son is revealed the meaning of our life. May his love penetrate our hearts so that all we say and do will become true and pure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our love and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true eternal priest who instituted the pattern for an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial, as we eat his flesh 
that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and parts of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim, your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family gathered here before you, O merciful Father. In your compassion, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who comes into the world to save us from our sins. Blessed are those 
called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. While you are not here to receive communion physically, we ask that you do a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I bless that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all his evil spirits 
who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.